this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create collisions or boundaries. So for example, you might have a game or you might have a program where you do not want objects to be able to run through other objects, you want them to bounce off other objects, or you don't want to be able to exit your window. So let me just show you what I have here. I have this white rectangle, or this white square, that moves when I press the arrow keys, but there's nothing to stop it from running clean off the window. It'll just keep going infinitely forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Nothing's going to make it bounce. So how I'm making this work from previous videos is I have this rectangle that's moving, uh, that's actually created using this rect1x, rect1y, rect1width, rect1height variables that I've set up here. And I'm moving it using the key press function. So if I press the up key, I change the y position. If I press left and right, I change the x position. And I'm changing them by this variable called move. And in previous videos, I've just put a number here, so something like minus 5 or minus 10. Uh, move is just equal to 5. So it's essentially the same thing, just making my life a little bit more organized here. And what we need to do is create some collisions or boundaries in draw. So I'm going to say create collisions, uh, or actually I'm going to say window boundaries. There we go. So a couple if statements. If rect1x is less than zero, what does that mean? If the rect one x is less than zero, that means it's exceeded the window, right? Origin is zero, zero in the top left corner. So if it's less than zero, it's off the left side of the window. So we can say off left of window. And if that's the case, all we want to do is we want rect one x to equal rect one x plus move. Or you could say plus a number, you could say plus 10, plus 5, whatever. I'm just going to keep using the variable move that I've created. And now what it's going to do is every time you try to go off the window, it adds or it pushes it back inside. So let's just give that a shot. Trying to go off the window, and yep, look at that. I can no longer exit the window. Every time I press the left key, it kind of twitches back. It pushes me back. But we've only done the left. Let's copy and paste this if statement a couple times, or three more times. So there's one, two three and let's go in here if rect 1x is greater than width well now we're off the right of the window so we want to subtract move if rect 1x or I'm sorry rect 1y is less than zero that means we're off the top of the screen so rect 1 rect 1y is rect 1y plus move and if rect 1 y is greater than height off bottom of the window, rect 1 y, rect 1 y, subtract move. So depending on which direction we're going, where the x and the y positions fall, we should either subtract or add move, which will push us back into the window. So let's see, can't exit there. Can't exit there. We already tested the left. Let's test the right. There we go. Now you have boundaries. But let's say instead of just bouncing off the walls of the actual window frame, we want to bounce off other objects. So let's go ahead and let's create ourselves another rectangle. So I'm going to go up top. Let's make some more variables. So var rect 2x equals, let's just say, 300. Var rect 2y equals 300 var rect to width make that 50 var rect to height 50 and these are just random numbers and I'm just using rectangles but the same concept goes for lines ellipses triangles and images whatever object you're using uh, same concept here so let's scroll down still in draw I'm going to make a barrier and let's set the fill color for our new rectangle to be red so we can distinguish between the two rectangles and let's say rect rect to x comma rect to y comma rect to width comma rect to height and let's just run this code there we go, we have a red rectangle here, but I can just run straight through it. There's nothing stopping me at all whatsoever, but we're gonna create another barrier. So, here we go. If 
rect 1x is greater than rect 2x minus rect 2 width, and I'm not going to put spaces here just to make our lives easier, rect 2 width, and end rect 1x is less than rect 2x plus rect 2 width. That means that we're within the x position, so we're sitting somewhere inside the x position of the second rectangle. And end rect 1y is greater than rect 2y minus rect 2 height and end rect 1y is less than rect 2y plus rect 2 height bracket. So here's what we just did. We basically just said, okay, if the rect 1x is greater than the rect 2x minus the width and less than the rect 2x plus the width, and if rect 1y is greater than rect 2y minus the height and rect 1y is less than rect 2y plus the height, that means that our rectangles are basically overlapping. They're right on top of each other. We couldn't literally just say rect 1x equals rect 2x and rect 1y equals rect 2y because remember the x and the y position is just a very tiny center point, one pixel in the middle of the rectangles. So if you said that, that means that they'd have to be exactly on top of each other. The pixels would have to be overlapping and that's basically impossible. So by doing this greater than and less than, it gives you a range to say that at any point, if they're overlapping, then it's gonna, that means that they're touching, not just the center points are touching. So what do we want to happen? Well, if this is happening, we basically want to move backwards, right? We want to, we, we can't cross. We have to be pushed backwards. So we can say something like move, if you're using a move variable like I am, move equals move times negative one. In math, when you times a number by negative one, it equals itself, but the opposite sign, right? So whichever direction you're moving, well, then you're going to move in the opposite direction if you're trying to overlap. And then we can say else move equals 5. So we're going to set it back to that increment that I set initially at the top of the screen way up here. Okay, and let's see if this works. Okay, it's working to a point, so I can actually cross over a little bit and then it stops me. You can see that if I go too far, it starts to vibrate and it pushes me back. So depending on the size variables, you might need to adjust your code slightly, or the size objects, or even the shape objects. So for example, if I said something like rect 2 width minus maybe 25, let's add 25 here to these increments. And again, 25 is just a random number. I'm changing this range to add overlap. Let's see what happens. Now look at that. So now it started to lock me out the second they touched, just a little bit of overlap. So maybe 25, there we go, that's much better. So now I can only get maybe an eighth of an inch in. So maybe we could change that again to say, uh, we can do 35. And again, this range is going to vary as well as the variables depending on your program. It's just the concept here of collisions, whether you're, so you see now that's actually too far. If you saw it actually started to twitch right here. So 35 is a little bit too much. Um, but again, you can go ahead and you can change your range uh, and figure out the right way to do this. But the concept is the same, just your objects and your variables may change whenever you're trying to create a barrier.